Thank you guys for liking the last prize video introducing the combat diary arc of the Iron Bar series. And without further ado, I will show you guys more combat achievements progress. So to start off the video, I'll be focusing a lot on the Theater of Blood. Uh, the first one is going to be the perfect Furzik task because, again, the friends invited me to do it. And that one was pretty difficult. I think it took us five hours to get that task done. We would always get so close but always make a simple mistake. Whether it be like praying the wrong prayer against the tag, getting nibbed by a crab explosion or touching a tornado or whatever. But anyways, at first I brought the crossbow because I thought that I had to kill the spiders rather than just freezing in them and letting them explode. But it turned out you can just freeze them and let them explode and you're fine. So I didn't need the bow anymore, so I just decided to bring freezes, which helped a lot with making crabs not a problem for the perfect Verzik. It just came down to, yeah, having good tanking and just avoiding the tornadoes and stuff. And we eventually got it at the end. We got it! Did we get it? Please tell us we got it. Come on. Yes! Oh my god. It took us five hours, dude. Finally! Five hours. And I got a purple. Alright, I'll give you guys the split. Y'all y'all can just take take the money, bro. Yo, we were supposed to do the dual top. Grandmaster, but then we ended up getting roped into this but finally dude five hours later we got it done all right here we go oh what the fuck actually got a scythe uh damn second scythe holy shit <laughs> the mane is a pivotal part of most men's looks and confidence however hair loss is a very common phenomenon that happens to most adults male by the age of 35. as a male in my 20s it is apparent that my hair has thinned a lot over the years too but, what if it is possible to keep our hair? Luckily, hair loss prevention exists, and Keeps is the premium hair prevention service. The Keeps subscription service includes connecting you with a certified doctor who will tailor and send the right prescription every three months to your doorstep. You also have 24-7 access to your Keeps doctor to address any questions and concerns for a high-quality service. Check out some of these testimonials from Keeps customers after using Keeps for four to six months. The Rice Fields, in collaboration with Keeps, is offering a 50% discount on your first order. Start saving your luscious hair now by clicking on my link, keeps.com slash ricecup, in the description. Thanks for listening. Back to the progress. Wait, how much is this? Uh, I think I'm going to keep this, to be honest. I think I'm going to keep this. And then I'll give I'll give the split, you know, on my main. So I'll, I'll keep the scythe. Be nice to have two. <laughs> hey, sweet, sweet. Wait, does this work uncharged? What does it look like uncharged? Oh, actually. So the uncharged scythe is actually really useful. I went in depth with the uncharged scythe on a Huaman video that I'll put on the top right. If you guys want to learn more about its uses. And uh, generally speaking, it's really good for Slayer mobs that are low defense because it's still stronger than a Rapier and such. And you don't have to use Bloodwinds for it. So. Whenever I have to do a bunch of different Slayer tasks when I'm pet hunting again, which I will be kind of soon. Second best in slot against certain bosses that have low defense, like Grotesque Guardians and like Diagonal Supreme, stuff like that. So super useful, save a lot of blood runes. If you are a big fan of combat achievements, I highly recommend subscribing to this channel because I plan on finishing all of this. So if you want to follow the entire journey best, the best way to do it is to subscribe to this channel. So do it. Holy shit, for the first time ever, a runecrafting pet next to me that is actually mine. What the hell, man? Over 26 million runecrafting XP. I don't even think that's too unlucky or anything. That might be just about right to get this pet. And I have a question for y'all. Which color or which rune type should I use on the runecrafting pets? And the choice that gets the most comments, I will change it to that.
in the next video. Uh, I need to count how many pens I have. I haven't done this in a while. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, yes, 25 pets. That felt really fast. Oh! <gasps> Wait, what is that light thingy? <laughs> what is that light thingy? Oh, that must be the rune light light stuff. So, still going with the freestyle plan right now for combat diaries, and the homies have asked me to do some more theater blood group tasks. The ones we're doing today are the five man master times and the no sight run. It finally is fixed, so we can actually do that task now. Yeah, so we have to skip it before yellows, right? Alright. Oh, wow! On our first try, we already got a 1626. Okay. <laughs> so, in five mans, the speedrun strategies for Baden is actually pretty cool. Because normally, you only manipulate the crab spawns on the last wave, which is 30%. You ignore them after you freeze them and just go for the boss kill. But, for the crabs that are on the first spawn at 70% and the second spawn at 50%, you actually stack them together. So when the 50% crabs spawn, you freeze them, but we are DPSing so hard, like we'll be decking out claws and all that stuff. The second spawn will spawn so fast that they will literally stack on the first spawn of crabs as long as the freezers get them. And then once they're clumped together, and the rangers can chin both spawns at the same time, which saves a lot of time. Oh, nice. Okay, we did it for the master. Oh, 14 minutes, 15 seconds. So we're a minute and 25 off the Grandmaster, huh? On our second try. Oh, damn, my chance. God damn, the blade's so dark, I can't see. They finally finished the task after glitching, like, after two attempts. They finally fixed it, and it always seems to work now. So I spent a ton of time trying out the hardest task that I've done so far out of all the combat diaries by a long shot and this task was the Grandmaster Duo Top Time which is to clear top in under 26 minutes with only two people. Incredibly challenging because you could not just do top the way you would normally do top. You have to learn a lot of speed running strategies and I think the goal of this part of the video is going to be showing you guys the strategies that I had to learn in order to actually get the time. Because when we just went for the duo TOB without learning the strategies, the best time we could ever hope for was around 28 minutes, which was such a big difference from the 26 minutes. We needed two minutes to shave off. Two minutes. Even the thousands of tops I did and the 100 plus hardball tops I did did not prepare me for this task. You really needed to learn some speedrunning strategies. And so I did, with the help of some uh, viewers of mine who regularly does the speedruns. And of course, with a lot of practice, we, we got it. It took us about um, 30 hours or something. I did it across many streams. Like literally, I would stream the whole time, just me and my friend practicing. And we did that a few streams. So yeah, it was a... Uh, Probably 20, 30 plus hours of practice, like no joke. It was actually that hard. The second hardest task I've done so far is probably the Hunlift task, which took like five hours or something. But yeah, this was insanely hard, but I'm glad I've learned it because learning the speed running strats, at least a decent amount of it, will help me a ton when it comes to the other TOB speed runs for like three people, uh, four people, five people, etc. There's a lot of other Grandmaster speed run times that I have to do, so. Yeah, they're really, really useful. So uh, let me go ahead and explain some of the strategies in the order that I learned them, leading all the way up to the sub-26. Even though Maiden is often considered one of the easiest bosses in Theater of Blood, in a duo, it's probably one of the most intricate fights out of all the bosses. I kill the red crabs that are separated from the clump, and I also kill Maiden as the main DPSer. And between the spawns, let's say 70%, when the crabs are about to spawn, I need to get ready 
to kill any crabs that are rogue. So I'm normally on the north side, so as soon as the crabs are about to spawn, I have to make sure I get at least one big hit on the single crabs that are coming from the north. I have to try to kill at least one of them because I'm using Death's Charge. Death's Charge lets me get my spec back faster, so that means I can get an extra claw in or Halley in for this fight, which helps a lot, saves a few seconds. And for my friend, his role is quite different for me because he has to focus a lot on freezing crabs. And how the crabs spawn really determines a lot on how fast we can do this. If the crabs mostly spawn in the far back, that's really good because he can just freeze them all before he makes it to the boss, which means it doesn't heal off of it, so that's nice. And there's a crazy mechanic with barrages. If you use Ice Barrage, you have the ability to always hit and never miss as long as you have good enough mage. Whereas Blood Barrage doesn't have that effect. So yeah, it's a more recent update, but it's so OP because if you know that trick, you can just Ice Barrage the clump and they'll die super fast because they'll never splash. Super amazing. And also reducing the boss's defense is really important. So we need to go for at least two more hammers to start off and then hope that I have a big BGS spec at the end. Because what that does is I can lower her defense to zero. And if I can get her to zero, then the fight becomes insanely faster. And we just have to avoid the bloods at all times. We cannot even freeze it at all. It's a waste of DPS. So yeah, there's a lot of very fine tuned movements here. So blow hasn't changed too much. All you want to do is maximize how many hits you can get. So that means open with Halley if you can just perfectly get to it as it goes down. And then you can get maximum scythe hits in and then go for another Halley to finish it off the rotation. And doing it that way allows us to usually get it in 3 down. Anything over 3 is a reset because there's really no reason why we should sell for 4 down. So Nilo Room is the most complicated room for speedrunning outside of Verzik because there's so many different waves which means that in order to maximize your time you have to really know your waves. Basically know exactly what's going to show up next and you need to know exactly what to do for every single wave transitioning as well and there are a few key speed running strategies that you really should know in order to really get a good nylon time and unfortunately for us we never got super good at it especially me i never got super good at it so that was the room we suffered the most essentially there's two big things to keep in mind for speed running the first one is knowing when to pre-fire so there's going to be a lot of spiders that are going to take its time to make it to the center and if you know which ones to kill before they show up to the center, that's really crucial because there are lots of flashing spiders that will flash to green. And as a ranger, if I can kill them with a blowpipe before they change to a different color, it'll save a lot of time because if you had to kill it with mage or melee, they're twice as slow versus a blowpipe. So you lose a lot of time if you cannot kill them with a blowpipe while they are flashing their way to the middle. You want to learn for that. And a second one is knowing the stall caps so there are a limit of mobs that can spawn and be present during certain waves. So like during the early waves, I think the cap is like, I'm not exactly sure, but the cap is under 20, which means that you can't have too many small guys show up at once. If you don't clear them on time, it's going to stall and then no more crabs will come and you waste a lot of time. And there's one particular wave where there's three big rangers that show up all at the same time. And if you kill them too fast, what happens is too many small guys spawn and then it just hard stalls the room for like 10 plus seconds. And then you lose a lot of time because of that. So you have to make sure you don't kill the green rangers immediately or else, yeah, you get the stall. So those two things you have to learn about. So for Dark Beast, there's really not much to say. It's pretty much the same thing that you would do in, in any team. Just be fast with the general mechanics, nothing special. Uh, I will mention though, I am using Thralls though too as well thralls do save a lot of time so yeah i can use it for every room so it's worth it now let's get to sarpis sarpis uh it's not too much different either you just want to go for max dps so that just means scythe the whole thing and the specs though you want to go for two warhammers and land as many bgs hits after that as possible so verzik speed running is actually quite intricate as well especially for first and second phase third phase Things don't change too much, but yeah, first and second phase, there's quite a bit of a nuance there. So, for P1, if you are using Thralls, you want to summon your Thralls. Melee is ideally best by a teeny tiny bit. 
So staff usage is quite specific. If you are the major focus person, you should be spamming staff the most and trying to get as many hits as possible, which is four hits and then followed by three hits per cycle. And the other person just sights twice. So that's me. And doing it that way will save you the most time. So for P2, there's some pretty important things you want to know about for the speedrunning. And uh, it mainly involves learning how to use RCS spells. So for Death's Charge, you can gain a lot of extra special attack back through the red crabs. And also through the crabs that spawned before 35%. So for example, there's a melee guy that spawns, you can one-shot it and you can get a free 15% spec, which is really nice. And on the red crab portion, the healing portion, you can hit the red crab down toward near death and cast death charge. And when the crabs uh, go into the boss or when you actually kill it, you'll also gain 15%. So you don't actually have to kill the crabs to gain the 15%. And that means you get more specs on P2, which means you can claw more often, which is super good for P2 because P2 is so tanky. And Claws can bypass that defense and, yeah, trim down the P2 phase a lot. Damn. What's the time? Ooh, we beat our PB by one second. <laughs> oh, damn. Yo, we still PB'd. That was a good, that was a decent first, like, I guess. Under nine. All right. All right, we finally penetrated the 27-minute uh, barrier, so... So yeah, it is uh, it is time to bring some more firepower. I'm gonna bring Death's Charge. I'm gonna sacrifice. You know what? Like you know, ditch this. Maybe ditch a brew. Cause I, I finished with like two brews left. So I'm gonna ditch a brew, and I should be able to fit in a Death's Charge so I can uh, down P2 a little bit faster. Dang it! No, no, no! Oh, I didn't. I ran out of food. Fuck, we didn't, we didn't do it. God. What? No. no. Fuck yeah, I also got the death charge for that. <laughs> God damn, I've had to sacrifice another uh, hilt. This is my second one, I think. Not really sure, but yeah. A lot of money down the drain, but it's okay. Dupes are best used like this. Like, wherever the hell this is, it's insane. Like... Yeah, okay, 236. That was hopefully decent. Fair. 541, okay, that's much better. For sure. No, no complaints, man. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, the pre-firing, you know, it's very noticeable. I can see it now. What's the time? Uh, 3.48. 18. We know, we need we need an 8 minute and 13 second first thing. Okay, sick. You see the brew, right? Oh shit. Uh, I need you, I need you. No! Oh, dang. Oh, you got this. You got this, though, bro. Just play it safe and hit one at a time. Oh, okay. Good luck, us. What is the time? Oh! Let's go, dude. That was such a fast first thing. Eight minutes. Dang it, the green ball, bro. Good thing I gave you the brew, though. Holy shit. Let's go. We found it. Oh, my God. 14 seconds. 13 seconds to spare. Just just made it. Yo, good job, Gozu. We fucking did it. But I'm not doing any more team speed tasks for a while. I need to, I need to go back on Hawaii and finish this. Okay, so we're gonna go for the Grandmaster for challenge mode rates for five man. I think this is going to be uh, We can actually do the 30 minute time for sure 35 minute time for five man 30 minute time for five man and there's a 27 minute time. Maybe you can get that as well. We'll see not sure but let's go for at least one of them 
I'm gonna let it hit me. Ooh. <laughs> oh, what? I still... <laughs> it's okay. They should, they should be able to kill it, I think. Yeah, failed immortal team raid? What the hell does that even mean? Oh, it died. Sweet. Okay, perfect. Yeah, these guys are gonna do ice demons, so I'm just gonna grab stuff for myself right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because unfortunately, I can't grab pots. So, pretty sad. And he's probably gonna prep for his team. Oh, nice. I, uh, I'm already done, pretty much. Yep, yeah, nice. I got. Oh, good shit. Nice transition. <laughs> oh, what? It's. I hit 14 through my prayer? Oh my god. Okay. That's actually ass. I can't believe I hit a 14 through my prayer, dude. I'm rusty at this. Huh. <laughs> For sure. Oh, where's my barrel's gloves? No. That's okay. I'm gonna take this off. I've never done a five man speedrun before, and I didn't know the meta was actually to bring an axe to cut the tree for Mudadel. <laughs> so I just thought someone was gonna CGS. So we probably lost a bit of time because I didn't have my axe. Yes! Sweet. Holy shit. God damn. Nice. Uh, we can definitely get the sub 27 with, with more practice. Damn, that's awesome. In our first try with hella deaths, we still have 50 seconds to spare. Ooh. Nice. Oh, very cool, very cool. So there's this other spellbook called the Dark Lore from the RCS spellbook that just came out recently. And it's super good for like catching implings because you can use it to lasso an electric that has gone rogue away from its original spawn point without you having to go through the freaking uh, wheat field. Saves so much time. Love it for getting medium clues for masters. I cannot believe I have to unlock another music track for the music cape again in order to use it. And I just unlocked it, re-unlocked it two episodes ago. So basically what happened this week is that they decided to properly introduce a quest for Theater Blood. They already have one called Story Mode and now they're just gonna actually make it a fully fleshed out quest, talk about the lore behind the Theater Blood and yeah, how it all started. Pretty interesting though, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, sucks having to do it again. And I finished the quest, it's fairly alright, you know, in terms of combat, like mid-level quest, I guess, but yeah. Um, finished it, and I can finally use my music cape again for my master clues.